Tennessee is a wonderful place to study butterflies. We have a, about 135 species of butterflies here. I'm Stacy Whetstone and I do a lot of volunteer work for the Great Smoky Mountains Institute at Tremont, um, assisting with their monarch butterfly tagging program. I also participate in the Tennessee Butterfly Monitoring Network, doing butterfly surveys. I became interested in butterflies as I was looking for opportunities for my son for our homeschooling. We learned about the monarch tagging in the Great Smoky Mountains at Tremont, and we just enjoyed it so much. We've done it since then for eight years now. It was phenomenal to see so many different butterflies, but especially the monarchs, to see so many and be able to give back in a way, be outside, but also submit data to real scientists and help them out. Monarch tagging is basically just going out into the fields and searching for monarch butterflies. Most of the time they are nectaring on the purple thistle. You go with a net and you attempt to catch them <laughs> and we will look at them and decide what sex they are and place a tag on them. The tags have a, a certain series of numbers and letters specific to each butterfly. It has a different one and then we let them go. <laughs> There's been a great decline in the population and we've seen that with each year. The first few years we went, it was just incredible how many we saw and then each year after that, it was quite depressing to see the decline. A good total for the day of tagging monarchs is about 10 these days. In the beginning when my son and I first started, he and I would catch 20 to 30 ourselves, and now we're seeing, you know, a good day. Catching 10 monarchs as a group is a good total. My name is Steve McGaffin. I'm the Curator of Education at the Knoxville Zoo, and I'm also the Citizen Science Coordinator. And so I'm leading the monarch tagging trip uh, that we do as part of Monarch Watch. It can be a little bit delicate uh, depending on the on the butterfly that you're working with. They're also a little hardier than you might expect. Um, so if you're careful with them, the, then uh, you're not likely to, to, to hurt them. Uh, there's a little technique and that's one of the advantages of coming out to one of the tagging events. Uh, we catch a butterfly, I'll train people on, on how to remove a butterfly from a net, how to properly net a butterfly, um, and uh, how to be careful so that you don't harm them. First thing I'm gonna do is them out of the net and then we're gonna tag them and then we need to determine the gender. So what you want to do is you're gonna put the tag right on the end of that cell. See that long cell right it's ending right where my finger is? Um, you're gonna put the tag right there. Now? And I'm, yep, I'm gonna put my finger underneath it so when you put the tag down, you can press down on the top of my finger. There you go. And then just, yep, just right there. And then just push down. Good. There you go. <laughs> well, for oh, monarchs thanks. specifically, the concern is that we might lose the migration. Um, we, we're not worried about losing the species as a whole, but we're worried about the monarch uh, migration may disappear. It's something very unusual. Insects don't usually migrate uh, to that level. Butterflies especially, you don't get the, the size of migration we get. And so understanding how uh, a butterfly with this little tiny, tiny brain can figure out how to get from Mexico all the way up to northern Canada or up southern Canada and then all the way back to Mexico and it's not the same individual. It's over several generations, usually about five or six generations uh, that it takes for them to, to make the route. So the, the monarchs that are flying back down to Mexico have never been there before. How in the world can you code genes 
to tell an animal where to go that they've never been there before? We don't know. We don't have the answers to that. We have no idea. We have guesses, but we have no real idea of how they actually navigate to, to know where to go. And so the fear is that we'll lose that migration before we learn the answers to that. Tennessee has the advantage of being on the southern end of a lot of northern species um, and on the northern end of a lot of southern species. So we get a nice mixture. We have a number of uh, butterfly species that migrate north up into our area in the summertime. So we get a, a, a good diversity of, of butterflies. Uh, the last time I checked, I think we were over 120, possibly 130 species for the state. I think Knox County has about 86 species, if I remember right. And here at Seven Islands, I think we've uh, documented uh, over 60 uh, species. Immediately after planting milkweed the first year, there was immediate results. As soon as they were tall enough and the butterflies came, there were eggs and caterpillars on our plants. And that was really neat to see because before I never really noticed monarchs in my yard and then to just see them them more and then reproducing and breeding and laying their eggs and caterpillars. You just become attached to something. If you spend days and weeks, like I spend months with these monarchs, you know, pretty much from May through October, and you just, you become attached to them. They, it's amazing watching something grow just like a child. I just think they're phenomenal creatures.